How old is too old to be commander in chief? I'm Scott Ott and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, the Drudge Report brings us a story from Agence France Press, which is the French news agency similar to the Associated Press here. Uh, with that question, given the fact that not only is the incumbent president, let's see, I want to get these ages right because you don't want to offend anybody. Uh, the incumbent president will be 74 on Inauguration Day in 2021. Uh, Joe Biden will be 79, uh, Bernie Sanders will be 78, Elizabeth Warren will be 71. And there was a time, Bill, in this country where all of that would have been considered a strength. Have we lost the respect for the wisdom of the aged? Well, that's a good question. Um, certainly, uh, without question, obviously, John F. Kennedy was considerably younger than that, and he was in his 40s. Eisenhower was not that old. Uh, Reagan was, Nixon wasn't. So the question really is uh, a twofold question, I think. First of all, are there any signs of, of mental deterioration because this happens? Doesn't always happen. Uh, some people, like my Uncle Ted, who's going to be 90 in a, in a year, uh, have minds like razors. He lectures on, on, on gas turbine engines from his head to today still. And then on the other hand, there are people that do slow down and start to show some confusion. Another issue, I think, is that is that when we talk about um, wisdom, I'm talking about technological wisdom now. I'm not talking about moral wisdom. I think moral wisdom and, and philosophical wisdom are eternal. But in terms of wisdom, meaning dealing with the world at hand, um, there are two things that are working against older people. One of them is that things are changing so much and even worse than that, they're changing so fast. Uh, all of these things considered still leads me to believe that, no, that, that age, un unless you can show any kind of a sign of, of uh, you know, real decreased cognition, then, then wisdom is the ability to decide whether you're going to launch those missiles, and actually launching them uh, is in the hands of uh, younger and more technologically capable people. Well, that becomes a kind of a dicey question, though, doesn't it, Bill? I mean, Bernie Sanders recently pressed about the issue of his age. He would be, if inaugurated, the oldest president in the United States. Um, he basically said, I don't think we should discriminate on the basis of race, on the basis of sexual orientation, or on the basis of age. Hmm. So now that uh, candidate Sanders has announced that age is the new sexual orientation, um, <laughs> How do you how do you approach a president, for example, or even a candidate, and suggest that he may not be up to the task or up to the challenge because he's old without seeming like somebody who's discriminating on the basis of age? Um, you know, Bernie is too old, and. Uh, let me rephrase that. Bernie is in the prime of his life, and so is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Hillary Clinton certainly has two or three good, solid campaigns ahead of her. Uh, Joe Biden is a young dynamo, and my and my uh, my my terrible, terrible fear is that we're going to face one of these people. Uh, so they're all they're all old and creaky and fossilized and so on. In terms of telling people, the first thing that flew into my head was uh, lyrics from a song by Eminem, and I, I think if I were going up to um, to uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, I, I just walk up to him and say, you know, you're too old, let go, it's over. Nobody listens to retro. Uh, and, uh, and I really think if you were really a, an actual friend of those people, that's what I would do. Uh, but you're not there, suggesting there's a biological or mental issue here. You're, dis you're discussing actually their ideology, aren't you? No, I'm talking about a bio. You, I think the question, if I understood it correctly, was that how would you tell somebody like Bernie that they're too old? Yes, yes. And that, I would that just he's say, starting to lose it. You're too old, Bernie. You're, you're, it's, it's, it's over. Uh, okay, like say a, the same thing to President Trump. If, if, again, I'm predicating this on signs of, of um, incapacity. Uh, Bernie Sanders has been exhibiting signs of incapacity since he was 20. Um, and, uh, and so you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. An interesting, an interesting corollary to this, or, or at least a, a, a parallel example, was there was, um, and may still be going on, but certainly I remember several years ago, an enormous debate raging over whether airline pilots, pilots should be forced to retire at 65, mandatory retirement at 65 for health reasons. And a lot of people thought that was unfair, and I did too. Um, 
in the case of, a, of an aircraft, uh, experience, as the case of, uh, of Sully shows us, is a very, very big win. And what, what I think that the pilots were objecting to was not so much that, that we have to face the fact that as people get older, they get slower and, and they, they start to forget things. Not, none of those things are particularly good qualities in an airline pilot. But I think what the, what the heart of the protest was, was this idea that there is a dividing line that everybody is on uh, and and no matter what your state of mental health or alertness is, once that date comes, you got to go. It's a kind of mandatory sentencing kind of thing. So again, I think that the entire crop of politicians in this country are all of them, uh, with the exception of Ted Cruz, maybe, and a few others I can think of. Trey Gowdy is not with us in 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 um, government anymore, but people like that. Are, are, I think, the appropriate age. You need to have a certain, it's not even a question of youthful vitality or mental capacity. What it really comes down to is, when was the last time that your presidential candidate was an actual person? That's and an this interesting think, quandary that we face because the, the electorate has been more than willing to reelect people who are relatively advanced in age. Uh, you know, Senate uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, 77 years old. Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, 79 years old. Um, and they have been returned to office over and over again. We picture the framers of our Constitution, for example, and the Founding Fathers as a bunch of geezers because that's when they sat for their portraits. But I think the average age at the convention was like 33 or something ridiculous yep. like that. It was very low. And, and Ben Franklin really skewed the age uh, demographic <laughs> cohort because of his advanced age. Um, it is an interesting balance, I think, going into an election where Beto O'Rourke is warming up for his race by running, uh, you know, three mile, uh, you know, 5K races and things like that, uh, while Bernie Sanders is slipping in the shower and cutting his head. Uh, do you think that this is going to be even a factor in 2020? I do. Um, and uh, the thing that concerns me uh, is the presence of a young and dynamic Democratic candidate. Uh, I think Kamala Harris comes with way too many uh, unsurvivable loads of baggage. Uh, you know, Beto is getting uh, traction because people want, Dem I, I, not, I'm not claiming it's only Democrats, but certainly seems to me historically in the time I've been alive, that it's, it's more in the nature of the Democrats to, to have this sense of, an, of, a, of a president who's a messiah. Uh, I think politics is much more important to the left than it is to the right. I think politics is their religion and their hobby and their and their uh, occupation and all the rest. And so there's this kind of deification of the young among the Democratic Party. And deification is the term I mean. Certainly John Kennedy underwent that. Bobby Kennedy underwent that. A, a number of people, you know, when Bobby was uh, assassinated, and I'm talking 20, 30 years after Bobby Kennedy was killed. If only Bobby had been president, we would have gotten out of Vietnam and we never would have had this and this wouldn't, you, you know, no. Um, Beto is, is writing that same kind of uh, democratic desire for a young uh, leader that got us Barack Obama, who was in fact young. And that's pretty much it. Um, also black, uh, but um, but you know if, if all you've got now is Beto, and all and the only reason you've got Beto is because he's under, you know, younger than deceased. Uh, it, it is it is an indication of kind of just the dearth of of quality candidates really on both sides of the aisle. But it seems to me that the Democrats are, are, have been for a couple of elections, certainly with Hillary in, in, in 2016, they are really, really starting to appear fossilized. And when your entire, I, when your entire political party is based on victimization and, um, and playing uh, you know, victim groups and interest groups against each other, it makes me exceedingly happy that the leading Democratic candidates right now for president are old, that's bad, white, very bad, uh, male in most cases. Long tenured in office. Yes, in there forever, insiders, and none of them have any charisma whatsoever. I mean, none. Bernie's got a kind of a, of a, a Bernie's got the kind of, Bernie's almost got like a Don Rickles kind of an appeal, you know, as he's angry at everything, but it's not, it's not pleasant. I don't know of anybody who, who thinks, wow, what a nice, you know, nice guy. The thing about Reagan, just as an example, as a counterexample, is you thought he, he would be a, a, a decent guy, a fun guy to talk to. Certainly John Kennedy had the appearance of being 
just young and full of vitality. He's out there on the yard playing football, you know, and, and, and there's a lot to be said for that. A lot to be said for that. So the, the problem, of course, is, is that as you get older, um, you get wiser. And the younger and more energetic and, um, and uh, vigorous you are, generally speaking, the less experience you have. And um, somebody asked me once on a, on a talk show I was doing, um, somebody said to me, asked me, said, you know, a young person asked me, you know, why are, why are Republicans so old? And I said, well, because it takes a while for life to beat the stupid out of you. That's why. <laughs> and, so, and so you're really looking for that sweet spot, I think, Scott. You're looking for that sweet spot where uh, a person with the gift of learning lessons has developed a fundamental set of wisdom and, and a clear moral foundation. And if you can find somebody like that in their 40s or 50s, that to me is far superior than somebody in their late 70s. So let me ask you one final question. Sure. We're gonna to have to keep this short because I need to take my medication and get my nap. <laughs> but um, you have frequently talked about the age of these Democratic candidates, and yet your own candidate for office, your favored candidate for office, is well advanced in years. Um, and I guess, how do you strike that balance between going after the aged Pelosi or the aged uh, Bernie Sanders and yet somehow be gloves off or, or gloves on when it comes to uh, with Donald Trump, who, who is also going to be well along and, you know, he's in the September of his years? Well, that's easy. Uh, I go after Bernie Sanders and uh, Nancy Pelosi and Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden for their age because their policies are are. are destructive to this country and have done immeasurable damage. Uh, Donald Trump's policies have basically uh, restored our strength. You remember ISIS, you may remember it from history books. Uh, I think they're reduced to like a, a, a two by four square mile area now in, in southern uh, part of Damascus. Uh, we don't have to go through all of those achievements again. And, and so I am not concerned. L look, for me, Donald Trump is, is in many ways he's he's kind of an anti-president um he and this is why i will accept virtually anything from him including his age uh because he is determined to at least recognize american greatness know enough about he doesn't have to know enough about business to command the economy that's not the president's job knows enough about business to cut taxes and that got us five percent economic growth so that, that that's there and and if people ask me whether this applies to the Democrats as well as to um, as well as to uh, Donald Trump, but people often will say, you know, if this guy's really old and crazy, I've heard this many times with Donald Trump. Uh, many times I've heard people say he's just so nuts he could just wake up one day and just decide to attack China, just launch a nuclear attack on China. Uh, and I hear this from grown-ups, you know, presumably. Of course, I'm in California, so the odds of meeting a grown-up are actually pretty slim. But I hear this from people. And they really believe it. They really believe that the president of the United States has the ability to simply wake up and just start launching nuclear missiles if he feels like it. You and I both know, everybody who's been in the military knows, every single person with any kind of a sense of adulthood knows that if Donald Trump woke up tomorrow and said, you know what, I've decided to nuke China, there would be a doctor present in the near future uh, he'd be sent back to the bedroom to have some rest and and watched very closely. But if you think that the entire military command structure of the United States of America is going to follow an order like that, you're out of your mind. You know nothing about the military. You know nothing about this country, nothing about how our government works. If Donald Trump woke up and demanded that we attack China with nuclear weapons tomorrow, that would be incontrovertible proof that he's certifiably insane and needs to be removed from office. And until that happens... Uh, I'm going to ride with the guy. And when I say until that happens, I don't mean until the nuclear war happens because the nuclear war doesn't happen like that. But if Donald Trump ever got up and made an, uh, 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 for example, uh, gave a military order as commander in chief, it's not border wall security, nothing that makes some sense, just something plain batty, you know, like nuke the moon. Um, then I think, then I think they would, he would simply be, I think he would simply be uh, replaced by the vice president for mental incapacity. I haven't seen signs of that yet, though. 
Bill Whittle Now is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com who are filled with wisdom and experience. Some are older, some are younger, but all of them share a common belief in the values that have sustained this nation low these many years. We'd like you to become one of those members by going to BillWhittle.com and clicking that Become a Member link. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible.